What's going on, Brews? How did we get to this point in reality where this grown ass man in his 30s wearing a Mimikyu costume just hit 1,000 subscribers on YouTube? Let's find out. <laughs> That is today's video. I have been holding off the whole narcissistic, I'm a YouTuber, so I'm gonna think that everyone cares about my life story video for this occasion, because, you know, I need my subscribers to get to know me. I do have a very, very interesting Pokemon card life story as far as how I got in, how I got out, how I got back in. Uh, I'll just give you a sneak peek real quick. I literally thought I was going to die I'm not kidding, I'll explain that story, but literally thinking I was going to die is the reason I got back into Pokemon card collecting, and my beginnings were in March of 99. Uh, in my last video, like I revealed, I did pull a first edition base set Charizard, said it was my best childhood memory, which it absolutely is. So I do have some very interesting perspectives from the initial boom. You think the Pokemon Go boom of, what, June 2016, May, June? You think that took over the world by storm out of nowhere with like everyone walking around doing this? Like, no. The 1999 original Pokemon Indigo League TV show combined with base set dropping was the biggest phenomenon I have ever seen in my 30, I'm 36, 36 years of life. There is a lot of things that have exploded and faded. The Pokemon explosion of 1999 is by far the single biggest just phenomenon I have ever seen personally in my life and yes I I feel bad for how much money my parents spent on us and we all played the game and with the exception of the Charizard we played with every hollow first edition or not we didn't we didn't do unlimited by the way I was one of those snobby kids where it was like first edition or bust, and then we were just waiting until jungle and fossil. Like, anyway, so I'm going to tell you guys, because this one time, indulge with me this story of how this grown man got to a position in life where he's sitting in front of a camera in a Mimikyu costume talking weekly about Pokemon cards. So, who I am today, I am a guy who YouTubes, Instagram, TikToks, Primarily, everything started on eBay. I am a guy who last year sold $20,000 worth of raw and graded Pokemon cards on eBay specifically. Why did I do that? In November of 2022, right before the beginning of 2023, I got tired of eBay sellers who did it wrong, who always do it wrong, who package things wrong, who have crappy feedback, who don't understand how to package and sell Pokemon cards on eBay. So I created an eBay store called Pokedan TCG. And the very point of that Pokemon store was to do everything right from the ground up, from the very beginning, from how you ship an envelope to how you ship in a bubble mailer and how you accrue amazing positive feedback. And last year, I made 1,200 sales and racked up $20,000 worth of Pokemon card sales with flawless feedback and very quickly became a top-rated seller. I used Instagram to market and advertise my eBay page. Last year, I went from zero followers on Instagram to 3,900 and something. Side note, day after Christmas, that Instagram got banned by a bot because I was impersonating the Pokemon company by being named Pokedan TCG. So that's the side story of how I did a massive brand change around Christmas took advantage of the very lame fact that my Instagram that I worked very hard on for a year 
tied to my eBay store was banned. I said, you know what? Fine. You're going to ban me. Then I'm going to do something crazy. And I became Mimic Brew. So that's who I am today. That's how we went from Polka Dan in an eBay seller to a Mimic Brew making YouTube videos. But let's teleport back to the year 1999. All right. Here's the official beginning of the story, guys. So 1999, I was already pretty obsessed with Pokemon before the Indigo League TV show and first edition base set dropped. I played the games on the yellow, you know, yellow, blue, red, all that on Game Boy Advance and Game Boy Color. So definitely a little Pokemon interest, but nobody was obsessed with Pokemon. Pokemon was not a phenomenon. It did not take the world by storm until March of 1999 when the power of the TV show Indigo League and the power of first edition base set combined dropped together more or less the whole world just Pokemon and every single parent of every single little boy pretty much across the world was buying their kid packs of Pokemon cards a lot of people don't know that first edition base set and just base set in general is one of the most printed Pokemon card sets of all time. Just because they had to do everything they could to print as much Pokemon cards as possible to meet the demand. This demand was insane. Now let's talk about first edition base set Charizard. So first of all, when first edition base set dropped, that card was instantly the bee's knees. It was instantly the holy grail. It was the chase card, obviously, from first edition base set. But this card wasn't just the chase card from first edition base set, this new set Pokemon that everyone's going crazy about. This card was on Nintendo Power Magazine, on Beckett, yeah, Beckett Magazine. This card was on in newspapers. Like, everybody knew it was all about the Charizard, <clears throat> even back in March of 1999. So about a month in, I'm at my local mall with my dad, my dad's girlfriend at the time, and her two kids. I told the story in my last video. I pulled the first edition base set freaking Charizard, okay? This card, we, we, it was never even touched by a human. I, even as a 12-year-old, we knew about centering, we knew about hollow print lines, we knew about all those little grading things that are taken so seriously today. I'm telling you that 12-year-olds in 1999 also thought that way. Because my first edition base set Charizard had a print line, factory print line, from his nostril. They're going like this, right? I'm going that way, you know. So he's breathing fire this way. And from his tip of his nose, like about, you know, three quarters of an inch to the border of the, the hollow, straight across line. So as soon as I pulled it, as soon as we screamed in the middle of the mall, and my parents or my dad and his girlfriend at the time were like, why are you screaming in the food court? I immediately noticed the print line. It's fine. So this was a PSA 9. It was perfectly centered. But anyway, went right back into Wizards of the Coast, and we immediately got that thing in a nice thick glass hard case with screws. That was like big thick, big, 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 thick glass or uh, acrylic uh, cases were like a big deal in the 90s with sports cars and stuff. So yeah, they were selling those at Wizards of the Coast. So that first edition base set Charizard, never touched by a human, even in Wizards of the Coast, we like slid it still in the pack into the soft sleeve into the... Anyway, so, and that card was the only card that we did not play with because me, all my friends, we actually played the game. Like playing the Pokemon TCG tournaments at malls, Wizards of the Coast, all that. That was like a big deal back then. So, but that Charizard was not played. It was never even touched. I never even really physically touched the card. I was smart enough as a 12 year old know not to touch my Charizard in 1999. Okay. All right. So, anyway, I get the Charizard and I am a kid who, you know, divorced parents, chubby. I was all about the Nintendo 64. I was all about Mario, Zelda, Smash Bros., uh, a little bit of PlayStation. Uh, I was obsessed, obsessed with Final Fantasy games in the 90s. Oh, my God. Okay. Anyway, so over the next, 
you know, first edition, jungle, fossil, team rocket. I went hard on these sets. I went so hard, like pretty much everyone else on planet Earth, you know, it was a little a kid. And then something happened that this happened rather quick, almost like Pokemon Go, to be honest. Um, Di Digimon and Yu-Gi-Oh came out on TV and then the toys and then other things. And all of a sudden it was like, wait, you can just kind of do something like Pokemon and different and make it slightly more mature, I guess. And, you know, you're 12 and you spend a year watching this TV show and a Jigglypuff episode comes out. This is my personal exit from the anime and the Go League. I'm sitting down on a Saturday morning watching an episode of Pokemon. It's a very, very jiggly puff. Jiggly puff. Jiggly puff. Jiggly puff. Jiggly, jiggly puff. Jiggly. Oh my god. I this whole episode, no action. It's just jiggly puff singing people to sleep, walking around. It's just the episode stopped, and I looked at the two other my buddies, and we all just kind of looked at each other like we might be a little too old for this, you know, like, so for me personally, there was one specific episode related to Jigglypuff where nothing cool happened. It was all just singing and it was very, it's just a very mediocre episode. And I remember that being the trigger point that kind of got me to stop watching the TV show, but I was still into the cards, but yeah, things started to fade. Pokemon Card prices started to fall. Dig Digimon, Yu-Gi-Oh, and all these other kind of new, you know, started springing up. And next thing you know, now it's 2001. I'm now 14 years old. I still have a lot of Pokemon cards, a lot of first edition base set, all that. But I'm no longer into Pokemon like 90% of everyone that got into Pokemon in 1999. And there's this site called eBay. And I guess I wanted some money or whatever back then. So, the first ever sale I ever made on eBay wasn't a big deal at the time. And in fact, I got a very large amount of money for the time. But the first item I ever sold on eBay was a first edition base set Charizard. For $360, I sold the card on eBay, on auction, on December 15th, 2001. I even remember the day that I sold the card. And I sold this card. First of all, its market value was about $325. I sold it for $380. That was a lot of money for a first edition Charizard in 2001, okay? Just saying. And the lady I sold this card to was a grandma who was buying the first edition base set Charizard for her grandson for Christmas, who apparently was just given a terminal illness. So, I sold my Holy Grail Charizard for $380, albeit to a grandma who bought it for her grandson for Christmas, who, who knows how much time that kid had left. So, it is what it is. A lot of you have been asking me what I did with the Charizard and if I still have it. Nope. For all we know, it's either hopefully with that kid still or in a Mint 9 PSA slab somewhere and got sold a couple times and probably got last got sold for eighty, ninety thousand dollars $90,000. Here's what it is. The reason I'm telling you about that kind of lame decision, you know what, we all know hindsight's twenty twenty. blah, blah, blah. Here's the thing. One... If I didn't sell that card when I was 14 for $380, I would have sold it when I was 18 for $600. I would have sold it when I was 21 for $800. There are so many times in my early 20s when I was living paycheck to paycheck that I guarantee you there's just 0% chance 
that if I had a little piece of cardboard worth $1,000, I would have held on to it all the way to 2019. <clears throat> it is what it is. On the bright side, still, you still beat yourself up about stuff like that. Like, of course, right? I had a beautiful first edition, probably an absolute mint nine. $100,000 Charizard back 2019-2020. And um, the thing is, as I said earlier, I'm an eBay seller now. And part of the reason I sell cards on eBay isn't just because I wanted to show everyone how to do it correctly. It's because I had an inside joke in my head. I moved to Arizona about three years ago, and as I was driving down to Arizona, I was like, how funny would that be if I spent the rest of my life selling Pokemon cards, attempting to make up the amount of money that I lost by not holding on to my first edition base at Charizard? That was a joke. That was a joke, and little did I know that would actually end up becoming my reality. So, $20,000 in sales last year, I only need to make about 60000 more, and I achieved that goal. But, that's what happened to my Charizard, and in some weird, ironic way, even though I sold my first edition base set Charizard in 2001, 20 freaking three years ago, I can guarantee you that sale on eBay is the entire reason I do what I do now, as far as eBay is concerned, absolutely. It's not the reason I got back into Pokemon cards, that's because I thought I was going to die, and we're going to get to that next. But it is absolutely a huge factor in why I sell Pokemon cards, specifically on eBay. And yeah, I, eBay has been the number one place to buy and sell Pokemon cards for literally over 20 years. And I don't think people realize that. Like eBay was around a long time ago, and I personally sold the first edition base set Charizard on eBay over 20 years ago. And that's just weird to think about now, given where we're at with things. But yeah. So, bye-bye Charizard. I wish I had it, but at the same time, I probably wouldn't be where I'm at now in life if I did sell it, or if I didn't sell it. Okay, so, now let's get into the crazy part. Why I got back into Pokemon card collecting. And guys, if you're still here, look, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to hold any, any details here. I'm going to actually just straight shooter tell you kind of how this went down, because it is... There's like, this is like a scene out of a movie, like one, a drama, and then at the end, a comedy. Because, okay, here we go. For 2000 and, this is 2019. Okay, somewhere in 2019, around Cosmic Eclipse, Hidden Fates, whatever. A buddy of mine says that he got paid $60 to donate blood. So I'm like, hmm, okay, sounds easy enough. I go to donate blood. Done, okay, whatever. I then go back like two weeks later to do it again. And here's where every, here's where my whole life changes. <laughs> my whole life changes right here, like holy crap. The way it works is you go in, you sign up, you, and then you sit in the waiting room, and then a nurse calls you to, to do the, take your blood, like do the thing, right? Well, I check in, and then I notice way too much time is going by there's there's people who checked in after me who are getting called to get their blood drawn and i'm like what why is why what's going why is this taking so long and then about after a half hour of sitting in the waiting room instead of a nurse a doctor a guy in a lab coat an actual legit doctor from the back hallway comes out with a clipboard and calls my name already instant spidey sense instant like oh this cannot be good that walk following this complete stranger to his office have him swing open the door and there's already a seat there and he says miss miss uh, dan my name's dan okay <laughs> he said my last name but uh he says take a seat and it's like the entire world was in slow motion. Um, why am I being told to take a seat at a blood draw lab by a doctor when I should be just going that way, you know, nurse? So this, this is already a very scary situation. And the man, this guy, you know, God bless his heart. Like, I could tell he was preparing to tell me something awful. 
like very scary. <laughs> anyway, so he proceeds to tell me, you know, Dan, we can't draw your blood today because your lab results show that you are HIV positive. HIV AIDS, HIV positive. I think I believe he said HIV. I don't remember if he said AIDS or HIV. It's kind of a blur. But here I am, just normal everyday life, you know, trying to make a few extra bucks. And now this guy I've never met before, this doctor at this blood lab or whatever, just said something to me that just changed my entire life. And all I remember thinking in that moment was being very grateful for how courteous the guy was and how thoughtful and like, you know, it wasn't like, hey, you got HIV. He was like, he, you know, he was very comforting, I guess. I don't know. The point is, someone just told me that I have, right then and there, my my ignorance level towards HIV AIDS, I just genuinely all of a sudden, like, didn't even matter how, like, I wasn't thinking like, how is it, how is this possible? How could this be? How could this? I was just like, holy crap. What do oh my God, what do I do now? And then, you know, I need to tell my parents and all that. So the way it works in this scenario, (laughs) it's crazy that I know all this stuff. Um, This was a wild two weeks. So anyway, I had to go to my own primary care insurance and get the confirmation, like to make sure I actually do have HIV. And um, well, Sure enough, they do all the blood labs. They take so the big blood tubes. They took so much blood. And then again, I get a second confirmation now from a, my official like, you know, medical insurance, that hospital network. Now they're telling me I have HIV. Okay. So first of all, how, how do I have HIV? When, you, when someone tells you that, like, yeah, you think about it, but you don't question it, you you trust medical professionals. When a medical professionals, especially from two different not related medical facilities, tell you you have a terminal illness, you you believe them, obviously. Like so I had so anyway, I now begin a two week journey of going down the road that someone goes down when they acquire, I guess, you know, HIV. And, uh, God, I could make an hour long video just talking about how insane that whole process is, but I need to hurry this video up because it's about Pokemon cards. But anyway, the point in how this all correlates into this story is this was 2019 and I hadn't collected Pokemon cards since 2001. And the day after I found out I guess that I have HIV, which I'm going to, I'm going to spoil this for you guys right now. I don't have HIV. I don't have AIDS. I don't, but we'll get to how that all happened. But the day after I found out and for two whole weeks, while I believed that I did have HIV, AIDS, um, something weird took over my body. It was like something was unlocked. Something overcame me. And next thing I know, I'm getting in my truck and I'm just all of a sudden I lived in Seattle at the time and back before 2019 just so you know there was not a lot of card shops there was some base there was baseball card shops sports card shops but this whole TCG Pokemon card shops left and right everywhere like massive amounts of card shops just appeared during COVID or after COVID or right before COVID like in early 2019 Even in a city like Seattle, as big as Seattle is, there was like four baseball card shops. And literally, that's all I had to go to to search for all the Pokemon cards in Seattle. And that's what I did. So I I wasn't into Pokemon at all the week before. I literally wasn't. I was into completely other things. I then found out that I had this scary terminal illness. And as far as I knew, I didn't know if I had six months to live, a year to live you know, whatever. I just knew my life was forever changed. And for me, I guess to cope with that, it was Pokemon cards. I I can't explain how 
random this was. It was just like, you know what? I feel like collecting Pokemon cards. Like something about knowing I was going to die and I only had a certain amount of time left made me just want to be a kid again. And what did I love when I was a kid? Pokemon cards. That was my number one favorite thing I ever got into. And yeah, so over the next two weeks, I then am like put with a, um, you should get like a counselor or a caseworker. Yeah, caseworker. I get assigned a caseworker who's like walking me through all the steps of like, what do you do now? You know, blah, blah, blah. Here's your resources. Um, I have now a doctor assigned to me. And, you know, I have my parents telling me, whatever you do, you know, don't tell anyone. Like, you don't have to tell everyone. Like, keep it a secret. Blah, blah. People judge you. Like, all this stuff going on. In two weeks into this, and now I've already collected a bunch of Pokemon cards over this last week. Tell you a story about one that I spent ten dollars on, and and how crazy the 2019 and COVID explosion was, because I sold that card for five hundred and fifty dollars, and I just paid ten dollars for it at one of those four card shops I just mentioned. I'll tell you about that in a sec. But after two weeks of going through all this, what you do when you are you know told you got HIV? One of those things is an appointment to find out what kind of medication that you're on. You're either going to be on like an oral medication or some other type of medication. I don't know. But it was I was supposed to go to that appointment two weeks into this whole my life has changed forever. I guess I have HIV now. And I go to this appointment and I'm waiting, sitting in the waiting room. And then finally, like 10 minutes late, as you know, as all doctors, he swings open the door and he's like, Dan, I'm like, yes. And he's like, hey, um, sorry, I would have called you, but I figured you were in the parking lot. Yeah, we just got these uh, confirmation results back. Yeah, man, you, you don't have HIV. You, you have zero antibodies. You're good. It was a false positive. So, yeah, you can go. Just like that. To which I'm like, uh, okay. <laughs> and I just walked out the door and that was that. And then I just called my parents and I was like, hey, good news. Guess what? I guess I don't have HIV. I have a false positive. And literally, that that happened. That actually happened. I went to donate blood. A doctor called me back into the office, told me I had a terminal illness. Another medical pavilion told me I had this terminal illness. And then, just like that, this doctor... No big deal. Hey, I would have called you, but I figured you were walking in. Yeah, you're good. You don't have HIV. It was a false positive, man. You're good. You're good to go. Yeah. Anyway, see ya. Just like that. After two weeks of just just everything changing. So, I, you know? And here's the thing. It, I didn't think I actually... A part of me was like, I shouldn't have HIV. I didn't do anything that you do to get HIV. You know? Like... But you don't question doctors, especially when two different or unrelated ones, you know, tell you of HIV. So I believed it. But then when they told me I didn't, I believed that just as easily because I was like, that's what I thought. That's what I thought, bitch. I knew I didn't have that shit. I knew I was good. But yeah. Um, so something that changed my life forever. I thought it was going to change my life in a medical way, in a very terminal, like, holy crap, you know, you, you got HIV now. Instead, I don't, and now I have this Pokemon card collection, and now I'm into Pokemon cards. So, something very random happened to me, scared the shit out of me, and it changed my life forever, just not in the way it was supposed to. So, being told that I only had an X amount of time left on planet Earth, essentially, this is what I was thinking, it changed my life forever, because... That was the factor that got me back into collecting Pokemon cards. If it wasn't for some random air blood test, I don't know what was going on with my blood at the time. Maybe I got weird blood, but once you do the real HIV test, I guess, because there's like two levels, there's like a basic one and a serious one, and you only really go off the serious one. Um, you know, like, that was supposed to change my life. But instead... What I did to cope with the life-changing experience, buy Pokemon cards, that 
ended up being the way my life changed. If it wasn't for this crazy scenario, there is 0% chance I would be back into Pokemon cards. If it wasn't for selling first edition base at Charizard for only $380 and jokingly saying, what if I spent the rest of my life selling Pokemon cards to make up for that? I would not be selling on eBay. So anyway, there it is. I have no idea. This video probably is way too long, but I have a love for this hobby that I know is the kind of love that you can't, it, it won't fade. It won't go away. Like I personally know that when push comes to shove, when I have nothing left, like when I might only have a year left of, of living, I know that Pokemon cards are what I want to do. So, so yeah, thankfully for me, I am 100% healthy, good to go. Um, but yeah, that was an insane two weeks. That was an absolutely insane two weeks that resulted in me getting back into Pokemon cards. And yeah, and then the Charizard, you know, yeah, it sucks. I sold it, but if it, to be honest, like, I'm glad I sold it because everything I do now is in part because I sold it. Anyway, guys, like, comment, and subscribe if you like this video. But to be honest, all I really care is that you watch one of these two videos coming up next. Thank you. Please leave a comment if you want to win one of these three Gem in 10 slabs. Deuces!